Hello guys, welcome to Stories with Issues. We are still alive, surprisingly. Um, I'm Lalo. Against God's, against God's wishes, we are alive. I'm Lalo. And today we are covering... Batman Ego by Darwin Cook. This is a story... <laughs> I picked it up because a couple of years ago, uh, I was reading, as, you, as, as I do normally, I'm, I, I read a lot of comic book nerdy shit, like articles. Okay, other than children. actual, no, uh, unlike normal people who read like articles on like medical stuff or like no news, I read nerdy stuff. And one of the things I read was that, and I can't find, I can't find this anymore. Uh, <laughs> but Matt Reeves book inspiration. This was included. This collection was included uh, around a certain other collections on Batman stories that took inspiration for the movie The Batman. Now, those who know me know that I adored that movie. And this is one of the this was one of the books that caught my eye the most because the style and I don't know if you noticed Robert by can we, are you showing the cover? I I'm showing Batman lifting up a a building. Yeah. But that is it, that, the cover yeah. It, is, it feels very Art Deco mixed with the animated series vibes. That's what I wanted to that Darwin Cook was a... So Darwin Cook was an artist and writer for Batman. And one of the things that he did, he worked on the Batman animated series. So you kind of want to get that vibe out of this book. Uh, think animated city series. Think uh, Justice League Unlimited. The good shows that formed our... Our, our knowledge of superheroes. Well, I, 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 I've never seen it. I watched Superhero Squad growing up. <laughs> Which is the perfect distillation of Marvel, of Marvel, of the Marvel Universe. I always, I like to believe that the Marvel, the Superhero Squad is probably one of the best distillations of Marvel <laughs> because of just the image of unity. Except for fucking Spider-Man who wasn't in any episode whatsoever. Blame Sony for that one. No, it was was it Fox? I don't know. I don't give a shit. I eventually I'll touch into that when we make. <laughs> I have a collection of uh, Spider-Man stories from the animated series, which is like because they adapted those ep they they adapted like not episodes but like continuations of the series Cringe. for books. For... Um, but this is Batman Ego, and. I wanted you to think, yes, animated movie, but also think year three of Batman. So, <laughs> in the timeline, we have Batman year one, the long Halloween, and then think Ego, right smack dab in the middle of those, of those, and then the rest. And how do you may be wondering, Lalo, how do you know that it's Batman year three? Not only not only does he say it, but we have Robin. Robin's not in this ish in this story, but we have met. Batman already has a Robin. Well, buddy, no one, so, uh, no one is asking. How do you know? They trust us. They're the audience. The audience is supposed they don't to trust, trust us. Me. Well, they should. <laughs> You're the presential. Um, but yeah, but this was written by Darwin Cook, drawn by Darwin Cook. Darwin Cook, unfortunately, I'm pretty sure he passed away. Lalo, Lalo says, "For me, all resource before doing a video." <laughs> well, I did research on Spider-Man Blue when we did that episode, and I and I, I, I and I remember uh, Jeff, Jeff Lowe passing out, passing away uh, within the uh, last two years, two years ago. I think, I'm pretty sure it was one of the least, um, one of the lowest performing Spider-Man videos on our channel was one of the greatest Spider-Man stories. Pretty well, I'm pretty sure that it did. Is it better than most? Spider-Man episodes. No, all of us um, Spider-Man videos yeah. certified hits. Right, we don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> moving forward. So, the story opens with Batman af going af uh, at a chase. He is chasing uh, Buster Sniffs, who... Okay, so let me explain what's going on before. Batman was investigating a uh, an attack on the Joker. He's coming after a Joker story. He is chasing after the last loose loose end of the of a Joker story because 
the plot of it is that the Joker was gonna steal, um, he was gonna steal a charity fund, a charity fund for I, I think children in the hospital, like a, a children's hospital fund. So a typical Joker move. Out- <laughs> such a dick. I think it's such a dick move of like you're stealing from a charity, man. What the fuck is wrong with you? But uh, so Batman's coming out of that fight. The Joker's been like, arrested. Like, so the Nolan, after... like, like the Nolan voice film said, it's not about the money. It's about the message. <laughs> it's about sending the message. <laughs> yeah, but in the Nolan movie, he was stealing from mobsters. Right here, he's stealing for a cha- from a charity. There's Joker said, man, fuck them kids. They don't fuck need charity. <laughs> um, so, he, Batman is coming out of that, and the Joker's been arrested, and Buster Snips, who, who the night prior uh, informed Batman of this whole ordeal, just took off with the money. Nice. Which, like, not the smartest move for two separate reasons. Number one, you run off on Batman. You don't do that shit. You don't do that. Number two, you backstab the Joker. You are dead. Yeah. Oh look, I'm having so problems. Batman... I'm having problems loading the fucking book. Damn it. Come on, Tucker Tracy. So... Tell me when. Tell me when to go. It takes me a while. I'll, I'll, I I don't know what I'm gonna do to fix this. Uh, okay. Uh, do, do you see, man? Do, is Batman bleeding? Yeah. Okay. So, Batman is. Yeah, Batman's telling this. He's like retelling like the the joke. This Joker adventure. As he noticed, he's about to jump. He's, he's been following Buster for, like, a couple of hours now. Buster is running away. He notices that he's bleeding from the side. No, Batman, don't and jump. He... You have so much to live for. You have, like, at least two more good films be- before, you know, things flop again. And and Batman's, like, he just starts thinking, shit, I gotta, I gotta take care of, better care of myself because this is ridiculous. And he sees... He's waiting on Buster. He sees him pull out of his car. He says, "Oh, he's going to he's going to get the money that he stashed. He he's got to stash up somewhere." The fuck? Oh shit! He's gonna jump. He's jumping. He's gonna jump off the bridge. Bruce jumps into the way and grabs Buster, throws him off, pulls him with a with a rope, and smashes against the wall. Does he pull a Gwen Stacy? No. Ah, oh, damn. No, Buster. He manages to pull Buster to the side of to the right side of the bridge, off of the ledge. And Buster's like, "What the fuck is the matter with you, man? Last night you you threatened to drop me off of a rooftop, and now you're stopping me. Pick a lane, like make up your mind. Why not? Why why can't you do both? Come on. <laughs> Batman's like, and Batman's like. I am a hypocrite. I <laughs> Okay, uh, no he's... Sure he's a hypocrite. He is pretty much a criminal, right? <laughs> who stops criminal who beats up the the criminal. Who beats up the, the worst criminal. The criminal. It's, the criminally insane. It's literally the he's for all we know. Okay, would you if if you saw a man dressed up like a bat, would you not consider him bat also a bat. Would you not consider him mentally insane? Considering, in fact, all this stems from the the improperly treated grief and remorse that he feels about his parents dying. <laughs> all of this is just because got, his parents died. And we'll go we'll we'll go into it as as the book progresses, okay? Um, but Buster is like. Batman's just trying to calm him, like, talk him down the ledge, talk him off the ledge. Like, hey, man, we caught the Joker. He is arrested. You're fine. And Buster's like, really? Come on, man. You know the Joker's going to get out. And the minute he gets out, he was going to threaten my family, which is why I killed them. And Batman's like, um, 
Do what? No. -uh. Like yeah. No, yeah, I killed them. I went home. I killed my family. I was gonna kill myself now. So like. So because wh whatever I do to them is better than the Joker would do to them. And he. And he pulls the gun into his head and says, "I'll see you in head in hell, you masked lunatic." And he pulls the trigger, and the image of Batman, horrified by Buster's brains into his face, and Batman, and Batman after that, Batman heads home. Okay. And we see the image of the Batmobile, and he's just stepping on the gas. Gas, gas, as gas. we. Oh, step on it. As he is, um, as he, as we see, like Hugo Strange, who I don't know if you know this man, but from, he's isn't in the he, Arkham series. Isn't he from, from that that one that one Arkham game from like the last good Arkham, truly good Arkham game? Uh, Arkham Asa Arkham City. Yeah. Yes, Arkham he City. He was the president of Arkham. He was the he was the mayor of Arkham City. I'm also I'm and I'm also tired of the Arkham Knight slander. So what? Half the game is Arkham you is in a tank. So what? You wouldn't want to drive around in a tank in the city? I would. <laughs> I have no issue with Arkham, Arkham Knight, other than the repetitiveness of the of of those missions. Other than that, I am I am fine with it. They should I mean, just the story could have been a little bit better. Another but... thing, another thing is they should just made him the Red Hood instead of the Arkham Knight because we all knew it was Jason Todd. <laughs> they were trying to, they were trying to bury the lead, which Dude, did not they work. were trying to. Oh, this is a brand new villain for the DC the brand Batman new for the universe. Batman, for the Batman mythos, no, it's, it's just the, they just adapted the Red Hood. It's a line. fucking reskin of the Red Hood. <laughs> <laughs> so like Hugo Strange is like describing what the Batman is. It's, People are describing around Bruce Wayne what what their in what their thoughts of the Batman is as Batman is just remembering this and he just keeps pushing on the gas. The speed the speedometer is getting higher and he remembers Buster Snips' face saying, "I'll see you in hell, you masked lunatic." Tuesday, as burning, Tuesday. <laughs> as he's burning on, by the by the fire pits in hell, and he stops. Just as he's reaching the edge of the Batmobile of the Batcave, and he he goes he goes into he turns on the Bat computer. He starts looking at his pic. He looks at he projects a picture of his parents and just tells them what happened. There was this there was this man, Buster Snips. He helped me capture the Joker, but in doing so, he signed his own death certificate and killed himself in front of me. Like I don't know what I can do. I don't know if like before. Before, I would just remember the mission. Like the image of my f my parents' death would be enough for me to like get over it. But now, like I I I, I don't I don't think I can do this anymore. I've gone too far. I've gone, and Batman's just just breaking down in front of the image of his parents. Gosh. And he passes. He 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 goes to sleep, and it's awakened. By a voice, saying, "You fool! I you pity think. the fool. I pity the fool. What's uh. the steps of clever man learn? We don't know that. Uh, that you think it. you know? You think you know pain? You coward! I will show you true pain. And it's the image of the mat of of the Batman owl with a venomized, like venom face. Venom, venom. Like the, like the image of a shadowy Batman." And we reveal the title of the story, which is Ego, a psychotic slide into the heart of darkness. Hey, hey Lalo, you and, might have an ego. Um, and they start, he starts talking to Bruce. He's like, now, so I have your attention because, and Bruce is just interrupting, he's cutting him off. Like, who are you? Like, and he's like, you, who am I? Don't be stupid. You know who I am. And you know why I'm here. And he started remember like he pulls out the picture that Bruce was looking at. Oh, you're looking at pictures. Well, let me show you a picture of your father, of your parents. You you you're doing this for them, but now you but they're dead, Bruce. 
just like Snips and their child. You're dead. They're all dead. They're dead, dead, dead. And Bruce like gets a hold of himself and turns off the the computer screen and starts thinking like maybe I'm like hallucinating. I need some fucking sleep. I am just done for the night. And a and a green smoke, kind of mysterious light. There's a lot of Spider-Man references tonight, I guess. Well, um, have you been reading Spider-Man comics recently? A little bit. That's um, why. <laughs> um, and the mat, the the cost, the Batman costume shows up again, and Bruce just says, "My God." And the and the and the mon- this creature says, "Perhaps, but lately you've been lacking faith." And like, you think. Bruce questions the reality of the situation. Because, to be fair, it is pretty fucking crazy. But yeah. he's he tells him like, "You think you you think you think I'm Batman, but I'm not. Like you're comfortable to call me Batman, and that. But I've been here a long time, even before the name Batman was around. Let me take you that back to that Christmas, which." Kind of reveals that this is a Christmas story. Last a Christmas Carol. Christmas, I gave you my home. And Bruce opens his gifts. He's opening his gifts, and one of them is a Zorro action figure. Oh, how thoughtful! Because, and he's a he's a little kid because Darwin Cook is like, yes, action figures, fuck yeah. And Bruce is having Christmas with his parents. And he, he opens the figure, he's like, Thanks mom, thanks dad. And he shows up to he shows to his dad his his gift. And it's it's a lame it's a lame tie that I'm pretty sure like because Martha gives him a look of like ha ha I gotcha bitch. And that's and Thomas gives Martha the pearls. Womp so it's, womp. It's the year. It's the the last Christmas. That last Bruce ever Christmas. God damn it. <laughs> the last Christmas Bruce ever gave, gave to his parents. Had with his parents. And I, hate, I hate the fact that I predicted it before. I, again, <laughs> I don't read these stories before he presents them. So this is a straight up fucking me being stupid. <laughs> um... And Martha starts to tear up, which kind of gives Bruce thought. And so, the, anyway, they're having dinner. They're having. They're celebrating Christmas. The Matt. I don't think this is Alfred because he looks too fucking old. Um, I'm guessing it's his ma- the the previous manservant. But he get the. The but previous. Gets a, no, no, no. The, if okay, well, if it is that you, it is Alfred. It can't be. He's too fucking old. Okay, Lalo. Your your perception of Alfred's been so fucking altered from the Snyder Force. Fucking Alfred in that the, film. The, the, Matt, the, Matt, the Matt Reeves? No, I'm talking about the Snyder Force one. The most recent mainstream depiction of... Fucking the Snyder Force Alfred was like 60 years old. Ain't no way Bruce Wayne being 40... <laughs> No, you you mean the you mean the not the Snyder one, the, the Michael no. Caine one, the uh, Dark Knight. Dark Knight, he is relatively appropriately aged. Bat, Bruce Wayne was on. Michael Caine things. was too was, yeah, but that was Michael Caine when Bruce was old. I've always pictured Alfred to be like a little like twenty, forty, twenty years older than Bruce, but Bruce had like when he's an adult. Why, why the fuck would Alfred be a 20-year-old servant to a rich man? No, like, look. I mean, just 20 years older than, than, the, than the Waynes. Yeah. I swear. So, so like, I'm saying that in the, the, bat, the Batman has a semi-decent representation. It's been a little bit since I've seen the Batman. I probably should rewatch it. But we should. When I think of like the most recent mainstream representation of Alfred, 
my mind goes to the, it's the I, Michael the, Caine. No, not Michael Caine. The Snyder Wars one. Michael Caine looked like Alfred, appropriately eight. The um, Ben Affleck's Alfred was not appropriately eight. Who played Ben Affleck? Ben Affleck's <laughs> Alfred. So so much we know about. It the, doesn't matter. This doesn't matter. Anyway. So that has to Thomas, be Alfred, though, doesn't it? Because yeah. well, Alfred he was the frail as fuck. Alfred was the one that tended to Bruce Wayne after the immediate death. Yeah. So it has to be Alfred. Probably, yeah. He looks. <laughs> I just guess he looks old as shit. Anyway, yeah, anyway. he's an old man. <laughs> um, Thomas, Thomas's take is called away for a. Thomas is called away for the for for an emergency at the hospital, and Martha is like. Well, you promised you'd be here for Christmas. It's Christmas. He's like, yeah, but I have to go. Like, okay, at least take Bruce. He's like, okay, Bruce, come on, hop on the car. And Bruce in the car starts talking to his dad. He's like, dad, like mom, mom, mom started crying when you gave her her gift. Does she not like it? He's like, well. Bruce, sometimes people are too are so happy that they can't find their words and get emotional over. Sometimes they laugh when they they're sad, and sometimes they cry when they're happy. You get it? You understand? He's like, not really. Okay. Cause you didn't explain shit. You just said what I you just repeated to me what I asked for. And and Thomas says, "You one day you'll understand." And they get to the they, they get to the hospital. And Bruce starts playing with his action figure in the back seat. He's he dreams that he is like the Zor the the great Zoro, and suddenly he gets bored and get, and and goes down to the to the hospital. By the time Bruce gets to the hospital, his father's his father his father's patient passed away. Womp womp. And that's womp. and that's the night that Bruce saw his, his first dead body. That won't be the last. Hey yo. And and Bruce is that man that man died, right? Bruce asked his father, like, yes. It was his time. He says, Are you going to are you and mom going to die? And Thomas is like, God damn it. <laughs> so now we gotta now you're springing up this up on me. God damn oh, Okay. <laughs> did take him to the hospital. <laughs> I mean, like, what was he expecting? Like, <laughs> oh, yeah, no, there's no death in the hospital. It's all hunky-dory. Well, he didn't expect him to see it tonight. <laughs> well, why wouldn't he if there was a... Obviously, he was, if he's... was supposed to stay in the car. If he's on call, you know, you would, why the hell did he... If he was supposed to stay in the car, why didn't he just say, hey, stay in the car? Why did he go... He did. Him? Bruce got bored. <laughs> Well, you think anyway. you kicked him out? Come <laughs> on. Hey, Bruce. Hey, Bruce. Get the fuck out of here. What the fuck is your problem? Do hospitals not have, like, decent security <laughs> in Gotham? Hey, man. I don't think anywhere has decent security. <laughs> Nothing in Gotham is secured. Mm-hmm. Anyway. And Thomas is like, well, yes, we, w- we will be. Everyone passes out. Passes on. But not before our time. And... That's a long way away. Mm-hmm. And Bruce asks, do you promise? He says, I promise, son. And the narration, the, I'm actually, the monster, the monster says, when your mother closed that door, you weren't alone. I was there with you, faceless, nameless, but I could feel you, and that night, you could feel me. And, and, and short afterwards, and it was a short time later that Everything changed, and we saw, and in one horrific night, in, I in, instantly, instant, ugh, in one for, horrific instant, I exploded within your young heart. And then, he was there on his, so like, this creature was with Bruce, in his mission, when he made his vows, when the, his life changed. And and he's like, you you call me Batman. You're comfortable with calling me Batman, but that's not my name. 
My true name is Fear, and I live within you. Oh, look, it's Scarecrow. <laughs> no. You know, and you know what the worst part was? I was like, oh, and look, it's Scarecrow's imagination. Oh, it's like, oh, it's something that's it's real. But I didn't say it, but I was sure of, because <laughs> you would have pissed you off. Because I was, I was generally going to go, oh, it's probably just something to do with this feel. Well, yeah, it's an ego. And we see, like, the image of Batman creating fear into the heart of, of criminals. And how he took this identity to create, to be a, a, fa- a figure of fear. Are you saying that Batman culturally appropriated feel? No, it's not like he weaponized it. Well, no, technically Scarecrow weaponized it. Well, yeah, <laughs> but like, Batman took fear as his main order in the mission. So he became... Yeah, yeah, he, he be- culture appropriated. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he appropriated. <laughs> <laughs> um, huh. and, and suddenly, words, and words spread quickly across the underworld. Criminals were terrified of the bat and the city that was and was safer and that was a city was a safer place to live, and for a short time it was wonderful. But then you ye- but then you needed your your need of celebrity came on, and your and your desire to not be alone, and which is and Bruce just cuts them off and says, "Listen, the go- the war necessitates Gordon, as we see an image of the of the light." The, of the bat signal shining onto the sky, and bat and the and fear goes. It's funny you think I was talking about him, when in reality, I was talking about the boy. Which and we one? see an image of Robin, the first Robin. So this is year, this is year three. I know, I'm making a joke. No, I know. Uh, we see, we see an image of Robin and says, and says. The boy is a Robin is able to take care of himself. I see. Do you uh, honestly depend, believe? Depends on the Robin. <laughs> <laughs> well, at this time, at this time, he was. This is the only like, competent Robin they have ever <laughs> created. And it says, "You see, do you honestly believe?" And Batman just cuts him off. Bruce cuts him off and says, "I will not discuss this any further." He says, "Fine." There are far more important issues for in front of us. At the same time, our crusade caused a radical drop in the street crime, and also seems na- it seemed to nation a more extreme type of criminal. And we see Hugo Strange, Scarecrow, Black Cat, not Black Cat, God damn it, um, Catwoman. Come Stan- on, Lalo. <laughs> How <laughs> synonymous this is with um the Batman. You of all people should know that. <laughs> tell tell them the story. Cat, we, uh, tell tell no, them the story. I'm tell not tell, tell them the story. God damn it! So when the Batman came out <laughs> in 2022, yes, March fourth, March fourth. The bat Batman came out in 2022 of March fourth. We went to see it all together, and Robert likes to tell this story because it's funny. I guess it is. Uh, <laughs> the, minute, it too. the minute uh, Sawyer Kravitz's Catwoman came came onto the scene, on the scene, <laughs> um, an, the only response I could give was a purr. Come on, do it for the camera. Do it for the camera. <laughs> 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 That's the best way to, I can describe my relationship with the character of Catwoman. But this is the thing. I don't have anything for Black Cat over in the Marvel side. Well, because he's toxic. Even though my favorite, even, even though my favorite character of all time is Spider-Man. Like, anyone who asks me and knows me knows that my favorite character is Spider-Man. Was that, was that a voice track I hold? It did. It was my a voice favorite. track. My favorite character is it's Spider Man, so like you would assume I have something for Black Cat, but no, that has never been the case. But anyway, Moving enough on. with my <laughs> enough about my my sexual desires. Oh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna hang myself. <laughs> Kidding. Uh, um, I'm not. 
<laughs> they all seem compelled to, to rise to the unspoken challenge. So, like, basically, he's Batman is, I mean, fear is accusing Batman of not just indulging his criminals, but creating them, calling to them as a challenge. If we, I mean, when you're in Rome, you right, almost to the to that kind of stand. And but there is one responsible for more deaths than all the others combined. Where others kill for power or profit, this one kills for its own amusement. There is only one solution for his sanity. We must set, satisfy justice. We must kill the Joker. Look, it's a debate that every single Batman piece of media <laughs> has to discuss at least once. All and City. Batman says, Oh, we must kill the bad Joker. He's going to kill thousands more people. And then the Joker just fucking dies anyway, so it doesn't do anything. And uh, so, like, and Batman says, We are not killers. And I won't have blood on my hands. And fear is like, you want, you really want to speak of blood? Let me show you the blood of innocence. I will show you the death that you have caused by inaction. Okay, you and, know what? You know how you know in like in like comic books, like Spider Man, it shows all the people in like these white shorts who he saved. I don't think you can really do that for a hero in Gotham. Shit. You walk down the block, you're going to get shot anyways. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 think, take, I don't I, think Gotham... I think Gotham is the a, is a worst, is a worst fictional city in existence. I, I, I bet you won't have that problem in Metropolis. You, you don't. <laughs> Although in Metropolis, you have to worry about Lex Luthor's bullshit trying to stop Superman. I think I would, like, I would take my chances with that than get shot with the bullet. Because at least, at least it, with Lex Luthor, I have Superman literally as a snap of my fingers if I need him. Batman, <laughs> he's just a man that has a lot of money. He can't do much to save you after you get out of his immediate area. And they, 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 and they, they, they mentioned that in, they, they mentioned that in the Batman, in the, in the Mad Raves of Batman. Um, it is well established that as much as Bruce Wayne wants to be everywhere, he can't. Yeah. I think it's in the opening monologue. Like he says that uh, it's, he acts that's through why, fear in order. <laughs> that's why he has the light to make him second guess where he's at. Yeah. So like they established that in the film, like he has that light in order to like. But at what take point? Take fear into the heart of the of the of the, of the crime. But honestly, at what point do you say, you know, what, fuck it. I'm gonna still do it anyways. I'm gonna take my, gonna take my chances. <laughs> I'll take my chances. I have like a one in nine million shot of not being the Batman's target tonight. There's absolutely no way. There's absolutely no way in hell that the Batman can get to me <laughs> and my buddy Jimmy over there on the other street. There's absolutely no way. See, that's, he has, I'm a, I, I got. I got at least a fifty-fifty chance on whether the Batman shows up. No, I multiply it by how many crime, how much crime is going on I, at I, the same time. I I feel like DC writers are starting to really think about that, and that's why they're introducing the Bat Family as like these <laughs> saviors for Gotham. Oh, shit, even they, they finally even, cracked the code. Even in like like Rocks, like not Rock City, but the WB Montreal, they're treating the, yeah, the Bat the, Family the Gotham Knights. Gotham Knights. They're treating this whole entire like Bat Family as like the second coming of Batman. <laughs> Which they tried to do in the Dark Knight Returns and it didn't work. No, not the Dark Knight Returns, the Dark Knight Strikes Again. It's just it doesn't have the same oomph to it because Batman it doesn't have the same effect when Batman is fucking dead. But yeah, anyway. we'll talk about that. We'll talk. And Bruce is being buried alive by the skulls, by the like the metaphorical death of that he has caused. All because he refused to put bullet in one guy's head. <laughs> Well, it, 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 that, that's the, that's the, the path, though. It's like, once I, I do it, I will not be able to stop. Which is, is your slack, is your self-control so little that <laughs> Kill one man who obviously Kill deserves one it. One man down. <laughs> the man one man who clearly deserves it. Not, yeah. not just, it's not, a, it's not about whether he deserves it or not. Like, you know this motherfucker deserves this shit. Mind you, he's the figurehead of all this crime. 
He's the valuing point for this crime. So if you take him out of the equation, it crumbles. Yeah, so it goes on the well, ground. Well, power vacuum. Power vacuum. Bullshit. The problem We're is... We're talking about Spider-Man. That's the minute Spider-Man. The Kingpin was taken that out, is Spider-Man. The Kingpin was taken out. Yeah, but it, it, we see that in real life all the time. Without, it's like mm-hmm. crime families that fall off like by, re, by just... By just goddamn police work, their power vacuums are created. People want to rise up to the challenge. So, like, it is not very off. It is not very off to assume, like, yeah, you take down the Joker, someone else will take his fucking place. Because when there's people but who want the rise to the power. See, if you let. Okay, this may sound really fucked up. Joker wants to destroy the city. If you bring in some, like, a Harvey Dent or a Penguin. They're not gonna. T- they're not gonna kill people. They're gonna like, stop the shit out of them. Don't get me wrong. Bad things, but you know, there's a lot of less less risk of death. They became. They become regular. This traditional monster. Yeah, but systematic crime is not. Is is not any better. Like that's what I'm saying. I'd much rather take systematic crime than hospitals getting stolen from and building blocks <laughs> getting empty. fucking leveled. <laughs> you know what I mean. You see the yeah. those levels of oh shit that's <clears throat> fucked up. How <laughs> <laughs> fucked up is fucked up. Anyway, um, so we see like, and the fears, fears main argument is like, you, your other vil- your other criminals, your other villains, just rise up. They saw a challenge out of you, but you created this motherfucker. And we see the origin of 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 the Joker by. The uh, the the Killing Joke one, the Killing Joke origin, the the Red Hood one. Batman was fighting some fucking criminals, and he's fighting the Red Hood. The Red Hood goes, he knocks him down a, a a vat of acid, and he falls. Instead of checking for if to see if, if he was alive and cut cutting it right up the like nipping it in the butt immediately, he just let him be. He let him be, and he created. He he created the Joker. The man so. fell into a vat of acid. Why wouldn't you assume that he didn't die? Hey man, it's fucking it was Gotham a, with like bullshit. Who do you think he is, Morty? <laughs> I turned myself into the Joker, Morty. I'm Mo- I'm Joker Rick. I, was, I thought you were referencing. Uh, oh, shut up now. The vat of acid. I thought you were referencing the vat of acid I, joke from I, I, last season. I was referencing the bad acid joke from that one episode of. Yeah, the the one where. Never mind. Yeah, yeah, that was stupid. Going over. Yeah, we're going That's... a little bit twisted. Don't worry about us. <laughs> we're not doing all right. <laughs> so like, and 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 he he says like, it's a constant battle between these two. Like every time we catch him, we allow him to live. He breaks free to kill again. All of his horror and tragedy in the service of your code of honor. And it's like, it's not like, no. The Joker gets out and he kills. And every time he gets out, he kills. The minute he's out, he kills. And you allow him because of your your ethics and your, and he's arguing like. And do, does Batman need that great moral code that you have? Don't you have any? And he asks him, "Do you have anything to say for yourself?" And Batman just goes, "He says everybody lives in harm's way. Tragedy strikes indiscrimin- indiscriminately. The difference is how you deal with it. Faced with having to accept that he had destroyed his chances for a normal life, the Joker chose madness instead." And he just starts laughing. And he 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 references the. He references the Christ- a Christmas Carol by saying, "Tell me, Batman, is it true you're just an underdone potato?" And in the Christmas Carol, Bam, uh, 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 what's his name? The char- the main character's name? I believe he's a Scrooge. Yeah, Scrooge asks uh, one of the ghosts, "Like, is it true you're an underdone potato?" Or because uh, an illness of the stomach can cause hallucinations. Ah. Uh. Um, in this silence, you consider this madness 
what do you think it will be when you t you turn off back on you turn your back on me like what do you, what happens if you stop being bad because that's what you're saying right now that's what you're telling yourself you want to stop what will happen i would be on the back of your brain you would never get rid of me and he starts shaping himself into the into the form of other people who he's letting people down like a lady who's like i understand you're wealthy tell me do you enjoy it tennis is really my game sport but not my sport but you know like he's living like a mundane fucking boring life and also the woman he wants to be with like people he will let people down like you could donate money you could be a playboy you could do whatever but at the end of the day you would not be happy and bruce just says I haven't, I've, I've had enough of this madness. This madness, I will show you madness. It bursts into flames. If you don't, if you, if you denounce me, if you try to jam me back into your subconscious, then I promise you, I will torment you until we, the day we die. I promise you, you'll wake up screaming every night of your pitiful life. That is the path of true madness. And as he's saying that, he starts realizing that he's wearing himself himself thin. And Bruce says, you're right. I know the choices I've made have repercussions. Tonight on that bridge, I came face to face with the damage I've done. And I don't think I can live with it anymore. You tell me I have no choice, that I owe it to those who have, I've sworn to protect. But those who I fail to protect will tell me. So tell me, tell me how, give me an option. You're telling me all these issues. You're not giving me any solutions. He says, I have a solution. I got it from an, an old friend of ours. Let's talk about Harvey. Harvey had it all. Money. Money and dazzling looks. Not only was he your best friend, he was a district attorney and he was a, and in a position to help us. His social exploits were matched only by his, his zealous commitment to justice. Then came the acid, unleashing a part of Harvey's psyche far more twisted than his face. Two faced was Harvey's obsession with the number two made it easy to anticipate his crimes. His dependence on the flip of a coin to make a decision made him a wildly unpredictable opponent. And we see Two Face acting as. I mean, Harvey acting as two-faced. He says, Harvey was in a position where his self, secret self could act freely. Harvey's condition ensured he couldn't be held accountable by anything he did. He says, his condition, he is mentally, like, he's mentally ill. We should not look up to that. He says, okay, okay. Now let's, let's talk about soldiers. Teachers who have become soldiers can... And can be fought, like fought and killed, or warriors, or even your precious sorrow. Like he led a, a, a dual life, and you're saying you don't want to do this because of your father's hypocritical, hypocritical oath, his inability to hurt someone because of his profession. Maybe what you need to, or maybe you're you're you don't want to kill because. You saw your parents be gunned down by the tragedy of your childhood. Like, although we share a host body, I suggest we admit that we are separate entities. You are not responsible for my actions any more than I am responsible for yours. You can be Bruce Wayne and, and, and leave however you want. Donate however money you want. Be of help. Be of service. But the minute Batman is needed, I, you will step aside and let me be free to deal with the devil in common. Yeah. Be, know your lane, man. Know your lane. And Bruce says, you're talking about self-induced psychosis, voluntarily splitting our personality. That's not what I want. He says, I'm talking about freedom to act, to fulfill our individual destiny. You are ruthless. I, I can see that now. It was my force of will that molded you into this image, but I channeled your fury towards a purpose. I tampered your wrath, left 
unchecked, your vengeance would be monstrous. And we see the Joker's... How even the Joker is terrified by what the Batman could do without without any limits. And, and Bruce says, the answer is no. Okay. Then we have no choice. You cannot dismiss me, and I will not yield to my and will not yield to my will you wish to be rid of me you wish to lead a normal life here you go and he hands him a gun he says you must kill me then he says and bruce is like where did you get this gun says, you know From the we both wolf. know we both know what gun this is it's the gun the gun not the spider wolf gun no, it's the gun that killed his parents. Uh, I'm being, I, I'm, I'm throwing shade. No, I know. <laughs> you, you, you really can't... have something against the Snyderverse. Okay, I love Ben Affleck. He <laughs> was a good Batman. He just had really shit material. He never had a true shot at a Batman film. But and when he was trying to get one, they didn't let him do what he wanted. No, because like, they were too. They focused. canceled. They were too. They canceled that movie out in order to make the Batman. They were, no, they were. Which I gotta say, I'm I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna go ahead piss off. The Batman is the best adaptation of the character I've ever seen. It was a good adaptation, but you know. But also, <laughs> DC was trying to rush out the cinematic universe, screwing yeah. over the entire step of the process. If Ben Affleck had gotten his own Batman film, where they took time to grow the character, Ben Affleck probably would have been up there with Christian Bale for how people perceive him as Batman. But because yeah. he got, what, three films at most? Got ba um, Batman vs. Superman, <laughs> Justice League, Batman vs. Superman, Justice League, and The Flash. The and Flash. a forced act cameo in The Flash. <laughs> well, do we really count Snyder? Okay, I'm gonna count the Snyderverse because that's that is the true version of that Justice League movie. Yeah. That is, well, either way, it's still the same film. But they're two different films That's, altogether. Though. Well, okay, two different yeah. skews, two different releases, but it's fundamentally, it's the same film to a degree. Am I wrong? Yeah. Meh. How, I consider them different. How, the, the how different events films. play out is different. But yes. We see more... We see we see, we get to see a tr the truest vision in the Snyder bit, in the Snyder cut. But no, yeah, ben I, I, got I, I see what you're films. saying. He could have, he he had his acting chops to do a Batman film. Oh, absolutely. He, I would have watched that. Like, you know, who else was a that. good Batman? Val Kilmer. <laughs> <laughs> that I will, that I will say no. no okay. Had he been given a, had he been given a Wait, hold actual hold on, hold on, Batman on. skip? I'm trying to remember who's. I'm trying to remember who which which movie was that? Oh, fuck! It's Batman Forever. It has Jim Jim Carrey, oh, Tommy Lee Jones. Okay, yeah. If yeah, he Tommy had Jones had he had good like, material like, to work like with, had he had good <laughs> material to work with, he would have been up there. This is also your Top Gun like hard. Shut the fuck up, bro. Pat the fuck down, okay? Am I wrong? Okay, okay. Does he not look like he'd be a billionaire philanthropist? Yes, absolutely. No questions asked. Is that the one where he gets the Robin or not? Uh, yes. That's that's the one yeah. because I remember it's because in Batman and Robin, there's Batman and Robin more is, than just yeah. Batman and Robin, but in Batman he Forever, but in no. Oh, yeah, Batman Forever kills the franchise, but in oh no, in Batman Forever he gets Robin, but not in yeah. the film called Batman and Robin. Batman, Batman and Robin. And it is the same act. The, the 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 actor who plays Robin in that one is the same actor who plays Robin in Batman and Robin, right? Yes. The only the, yeah. the they only talk about how <laughs> Batman <laughs> changes <laughs> so <laughs> significantly. <laughs> Clooney. Clooney, hey, what, what, what happened to Val Kilmer? Oh, he didn't want to do another Batman film. Oh, okay. <laughs> hey, George Clooney, you <laughs> here? Yo, Clooney, you, you, you up? I'm, I'm down, I'm down. 
And then and then I'm gonna kill the franchise. Looks like how Batman's gonna kill this still, right? Um so Batman points a gun at and he says one bullet from that gun will destroy me utterly and completely. Think of it of a new of a new life, free of fear, free of the horrible weight of responsibility, free of me, and free, free me and free yourself. And Batman says, "No, no, I can't, because it would be committing suicide." With who? Because he's killing, it, it it would be it would be killing himself. Yeah. Because Batman is part of himself, and yeah, yeah, you get it, you get it. If anything, it. he's more Batman than he's Bruce Wayne. And he I, has become and more Batman than Bruce I, Wayne. I, I and he think. Begins... Also, look at the look at the stature of how Batman is in this. He's not this small little infant. He's this big hulking monster. Yeah. That's, a, that's another thing that I think that's the best thing about the Batman is that it really shows that struggle of the Bruce Wayne, yeah. Batman. I could like talk about the Batman I for a minute. Could. I know you could. You have. Um, and he drops a gun and says, "Is this what my life is?" Yes, absolutely. <laughs> is this my life? He says, "Is this what I should look up? I look, I look forward to." He said, "Yes, it is your destiny." We lost our normal life a long ago. We cannot change the past. And we all we can do is protect others and allow them the chance for happiness that we'll never have. You have to accept that. And, it, and all, all he can say is, the truth hurts. But a very wise man said that the truth will set you free. And this is where Batman starts... To offer a solution. He says you must understand that there is a line we may never cross. No killing. This is the only difference between us and them. As much as Batman is as a terrifying symbol. To under to the underworld. We, is, we are also a symbol of hope to the good people of the city. A symbol of hope. If you can live with that. Then Bruce Wayne can live with the responsibility. And this is also like something that. They establish in the, and I think this is why I think that this is this is this is what inspired a lot of the Batman because what is the main what is the main lesson of the Batman? Recovering hope, Everyone. standing yes, for hope. Yes, he is symbol. Want to lie? Throughout, the, throughout the entire movie, he is a sim. He calls himself vengeance. He doesn't call himself Batman. They don't call him. They call him the only one who calls him Batman is the Riddler. But he refers to himself as vengeance. I am vengeance. Always referring to himself as vengeance. And and th that is mirrored by the Riddler's goons at the end of the movie. When he's beating he's beating one of them and says, don't you get it? Don't you see it? We're vengeance. And that's when he realizes he cannot be this kind. His symbol of vengeance. Because vengeance doesn't work. Because at the, end of the, the day, S vengeance doesn't stands work. for hope. Fucking damn it! <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna kick. Don't you ass. vote? You kick my ass. I will sit on top of Felicia again. Okay. Felicia was just called, anyway. by the way, just just for context. Um. So. And the entity agrees. And it explodes on a on a on a on a, on a cloud of. Bats and, and green and green dust. Spawn, is that you? He leaves it. <laughs> Holy shit, Al Simmons, what the hell are you doing here? Batman vs. Spawn, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> and he leaves behind a, a, a photo. And then we cut back to, to, to the... Uh, to the Gaza news station where they're reporting live that the Joker got got out and he's holding, he's he is taken he is taken pages of the prop of, of the popular night spot, hostage and threatened to kill one hostage for every and then we cut off to the to uh, to uh, to Gordon telling people telling people that we must wait a little bit let him 
Let him cook. Let him cook. Let him cook. <laughs> you might have a problem, and Lolo. <laughs> we do? You think? You think? I think. Um, and, a, and, a, and, a, and a uniform boss that says, Commissioner Gordon, we have a message for him. And Gordon goes to the radio and says, I was getting worried. I thought maybe something happened to you. Something did happen to me, Commissioner. <laughs> but I managed to come out of it, come, come away from it in one piece. And it's like, what? I didn't, I didn't hear anything on the, on the radio. He's like, ah, never mind. I'm on my way, Commissioner. You know, you know what that doesn't make and, sense to me mentally? And we, you know what, and I, we, that doesn't make sense. What? You know what? You know what this, this Batman commercial and Gordon relationship reminds me of? <laughs> what? It reminds me of the, the cop and John McClane and Die Hard. Ah, I love that. Um, and basically, he, the picture that was left behind by by the by the power by the entity of fear, was of the Waynes in that one Christmas. Oh, kind of to remind God. Bruce. To remind Bruce, what the true mission is, why we do what we do, for them, and I I like this story because. It's an art. It's not. A, it's not just the. Because we all know. We know why Batman became bad. No. But why does he stay? Why does he stay, Batman? Why does he keep putting on the costume and going out every night? Why does he fight and men that, who dress up like clowns, dress up like cats, one that looks like a fucking penguin, <laughs> night after night? And a and a and, and a mutt man. Like, which, by the way, I want to see Clayface in the next... The, in you the know, next, the you know who I want to see? I want to see the Condiment Man. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I want to see, like, if we, if we were to put out a list of who, which characters do we want to see in the next... In the next... In the Batman Part 2. Who will you... Who, anyway. Uh, we'll continue this in a minute. And we, we show like Batman's true nature and his conflict within himself. And I think it's very important to, to remember like why Batman remains himself. Like why does he keep putting on the cowl and going out every night? And that was Batman Ego. Thank you so much for watching. This is I'm Lalo. And I'm Lalo. And this is Thursday Delicious. We might Before kids, we go, drink some water. And be safe. Who and leave us below in the comments. Who, w which villain would you want to see in the Batman Part Two? And thank you so much for watching. Bye bye. Peace.